The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Okay, thank you for coming for the Sunday talk, for listening to Sunday talk. So today I would like to speak about the difference between how to realize Dhamma and uh, how to come to the results of Dhamma, that means the fruits of Dhamma. This is, these are two things. So attaining Nibbana and realizing Nibbana is two things. So most of the time we mix up these two. So, so I, I'm going to read uh, a part of the Chanki Sutta, so then uh, you can uh, understand uh, how to realize Dhamma. That means how to investigate, listen and think wisely and apply to your day-to-day -day life and understand the truth of Dhamma. And then how we can use this, that knowledge you gain by uh, the applying Dhamma to yourself and listening to Dhamma and think about Dhamma and then you, you see the reality of it and then you can use it in your day-to-day -day life to extinguish the all sorts of suffering and then you gradually develop the path then you go through the path and attain Nibbana finally. So I'm reading this uh, this, this part of Chanki Sutta, then you can understand how Lord Buddha teach it. So, this is a conversation with uh, the Tarukka Brahmana, the, the, uh, this uh, Chanki Sutta, actually, the Chanki is the one Brahmana, his student, their student, uh, the, the Tarukka Brahmana is ask, asking question from uh, Lord Buddha. So, I am reading this one now. This is just an extraction of the, the whole sutta, this part of the sutta. But Master Gautama, how do you define awakening to the truth? Bharadwaja, take the case of mendicant living supported by a town or village. A householder or their child approaches and scrutinizes them for three kinds of things. Things that arouse greed, things that provoke hate, and things that promote delusion. Does this venerable have any qualities that arouse greed? Such qualities that were their mind to be overwhelmed by them, they might say that they know, even though they don't know. Or they see, even though they don't see. Or that they might encourage others to do what is for their lasting harm and suffering. Scrutinizing them they find this venerable has no such qualities that arouse greed. Rather that venerable has bodily and verbal behavior like that of someone without greed. And the principle that they teach is deep, hard to see, hard to understand, peaceful, sublime, beyond the scope of reason, subtle, Comprehensible to, uh, comprehensible to the astute. It's not easy for someone with greed to teach this. Scrutinizing them in this way, they see that they are purified of qualities that arouse greed. Next, they search them for qualities that provoke hate. Does this venerable have any qualities that provoke hate? Such qualities that were their mind to be overwhelmed by them. They might say that they know, 
even though they don't know. Or they see, even though they don't see. Or, they, or that they might encourage others to do what is for their lasting harm and suffering. Scrutinizing them, they find this venerable has no such qualities that provoke hate. Rather that venerable has bodily and verbal behavior like that of someone without hate. And the, and the principle that they teach is deep, hard to see, hard to understand, peaceful, sublime, beyond the scope of reason, subtle, comprehensible to the uh, astute. It's not easy for someone with hate to teach this. Scrutinizing them in this way, they see that they are purified of qualities that provoke hate. Next, they scrutinizes, scrutinize them for qualities that promote delusion. Does this venerable have any qualities that promote delusion? Such qualities that were their mind to be overwhelmed by them. They might say that they know, even though they don't know. Or, they, or that they see, even though they don't see. Or that they might encourage others to do what is for their lasting harm and suffering. Scrutinizing them, they find this venerable has no such qualities that promote delusion. <coughs> Rather, that venerable has bodily and verbal behavior like that of someone without delusion. And the principle that they teach is deep, hard to see, hard to understand, peaceful, sublime, beyond the scope of reason, subtle, comprehensible to the astute. It, it is not easy for someone with delusion to teach this. Scrutinizing them in this way, they see that they are purified of qualities that promote delusion. Next, they place faith in them. When faith has arisen, they approach the teacher. They pay homage, lend an ear, hear the teachings, remember the teachings, reflect on their meaning, and accept them after consideration. Then enthusiasm springs up. They make an effort. Weigh up and persevere. Persevering, they directly realize the ultimate truth and see it with penetrating wisdom. That is how the awakening to the to truth is defined. Bharadvaja, I described the awakening to truth as defined in this way. But this is not yet arrival at the truth. So this is how awakening to the truth. This is not the arrival at the truth. So that is how the awakening to the truth is defined. Master Gautama, I regard the awakening to the truth as defined in this way. But Master Gautama, how do you define the arrival at the truth? By the cultivation, development and making much of these very same things, there is the arrival at the truth. I will read it again. By the cultivation, development and making much of these very same things, there is the arrival at the truth. That is how the arrival at the truth is defined. Bharadvaja, I described 
the arrival at the truth as defined in this way. So that is how the arrival at the truth is defined, Master Gautama. I regarded, I regard the arrival at the truth as defined in this way. But what quality is helpful for arriving at the truth? Striving is helpful for arriving at the truth. If you do not strive, you won't arrive at the truth. You arrive at the truth because you strive. That is why striving is helpful for arriving at the truth. But what quality is helpful for striving? Weighing up the teachings is helpful for striving. Then making an effort is helpful for weighing up teachings. Enthusiasm is helpful for making effort. Acceptance of teachings after consideration is helpful for enthusiasm. Reflecting on the meanings, meaning of the teachings is helpful for accepting them after consideration. Remembering the teachings is helpful for reflecting on their meaning. Hearing the teachings is helpful for remembering the teachings. Listening is helpful for hearing the teachings. Paying homage is helpful for listening. Approach is helpful for paying homage. Faith is helpful for approaching a teacher. So if you don't give, give rise to faith, you won't approach a teacher. You approach a teacher because you have faith. That is why faith is helpful for approaching a teacher. So this is the part I, I want to introduce you or remind you uh, when starting this talk. If you have any questions, you can ask. So I want to tell you that it is important to listen this Dhamma and examine it and understand it and then try to use it in your day-to-day -day life. So, so faith is the most important thing. This faith build up depending on how you investigate it and how you give an importance to it. So then you see this Dhamma is not something uh, apart from us. It is within ourselves. It is a part of our life. It is, Dhamma is actually the, how this body and mind works and wh why this body is here why this mind is here, why I, my mind is work in this way, my, why my body is working in this way. So all these things you can understand through this Dhamma. So it is important to listen to Dhamma and uh, practice and uh, the, watch, the first investigate within yourself and see the, the truth or the reality of Dhamma within yourself. So it is important to listen to Dhamma and understand Dhamma. So understanding Dhamma is one thing. Once you understand Dhamma, you see the path to the liberation. So then you follow the path and come to the liberation. That's why the coming to the truth is one thing and understanding truth is another thing. So first you, you should understand the truth and accept the truth. So the faith is the, the first factor you should have to listen to Dhamma and uh, think wisely and understand it. So if you have any questions you can ask, then I can talk further. Coming into the teachings from um, elsewhere, uh, perhaps from Christianity or perhaps from nothing, yeah. um, faith or confidence seems sometimes hard to establish first. Um, I just wondered if you might comment further on faith or confidence. Yeah, that's why Lord Buddha say first uh, you have to in investigate your teacher the, or the person who is telling this Dhamma and see 
whether he has uh, the uh, mental state of the bo bodily and verbal actions of greed based on greed, hatred, and delusion. So you have to see whether, and the other method is you li just listen to the Dhamma and think wisely and use it and see whether greed, hatred, and delusion arise within yourself. Or then, then you see it should not, that kind of uh, things are unskillful. That means greed, hatred, and delusion is unskillful. You should not follow that path. That is Lord Buddha's instruction. That is, you should understand because people fell into this kind of um, practices. The, that means the greed based, hatred based, or the ul ultimately you end up with greed or hatred. So it, it creates more suffering to you. So that not leads to to uh, extinguishment of suffering that leads to more suffering. So that's why Lord Buddha say it is good to understand at the beginning whether these things lead to more suffering or in other words more leads to more uh, greed, hatred and more delusion. Not, not knowing what is going on here. So more confused mental states are arising if you are following that kind of teaching. So it is better just abandon that kind of uh, faith. That means the faith on that kind of people or the, that kind of teachings. So it's uh, the investigation first, in a way. Yeah. An yeah. investigation with um, a, te a, a, a practitioner. Yeah. A that, this is actually an important thing to hear Lord Buddha say. First, you should have some kind of a faith. If you don't have a faith, you don't listen to anyone else. You just follow yourself. So you should have the faith. It, it is the most important thing at the beginning. So if you have faith, you just go and listen. Go and listen to another person. J and just, but not just listening, not just following the person. You just investigate and see whether these, these teachings or these teachings uh, give me more non-greed, non-hatred, and non-delusion. And this, these teachings are helpful for me to subside greed, hatred, and delusion. So then you can follow. But if you don't have faith, you don't listen to others. So that's why the faith is the, the root thing. But you should investigate and see. Because the Lord Buddha say, if you don't investigate my Dhamma, you don't get anything from this Dhamma. So you have to analyze and see whether it is true or false. Then you see the reality in it. That's why the realizing Dhamma is important. So, so realizing, in dham, dham, realizing Dhamma is not the, the practicing the path. You see the path when you realize, oh, this is true, this is correct. This works in this way in, within myself. So I can go, I can totally extinguish the suffering states of mind or the suffering, uh, the uh, bodily, uh, bodily suffering and mental suffering, I can abandon in this way. So once you see this one, then you follow the path. Because that is a different level of faith arise once you investigate and see the truth in Dhamma. Then your faith come to a different state. So then you get the courage to use it. At the beginning, you have to investigate and see and the, the, the un try to understand the, the truth in it. So that's why this one gives the few steps. I, will, I, will, I, I would like to read, it, read these steps again. First, they place faith in them. When faith has arisen, they approach the teacher. They pay homage, lend an ear, hear the teachings, remember the teachings. Reflect on their meaning and accept them after consideration. These things are important. Then enthusiasm springs up because once you see this is, this is true, this is reality, this works to me. I can extinguish uh, suffering when I, main, when I have this understanding. When I, when I see the, the world through this way. So enthusiasm springs up. 
they make an, make an effort then you put an effort to to achieve the 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 the, the fruits of dhamma or actually see within yourself the emancipation or the the, the extinguishment of suffering for even for a moment then weigh up and persevere persevering they directly realize the ultimate truth and see it with penetration penetrating wisdom that is how the awakening to the truth is defined bharadwaja i describe the awakening to the tr to truth as defined in this way but this is not yet the arrival at the truth so arrival at the truth is the perfecting again in again and again this is how the awakening uh, by cultivating uh, by the cultivation development and making much of these very same things there is the arrival at the truth so you have to perfecting and achieve the stages that is the path to nibbana that is the noble eightfold path the first factor is the right view first you get the right view by the following this uh, the the previous steps i have mentioned so then you fall into the path and practice the path the first step is the path the first step of the path is right view when you have the right view then you cultivate the all other steps and finally attain jhanas so jhana is the direct experiencing you the total extinguishment of five senses and five sense consciousnesses and five all forms feelings perceptions and volitions related to five sense consciousnesses then you see these things are extinguishable you can these things arise depending on causes and conditions when the causes and conditions are ceasing this uh, phenomena also totally cease that means the the uh, the, the forms feelings perceptions volitions and consciousnesses related to five senses totally cease so this is this one first you experience once you are attaining jhanas great great and hatred is easy to to distinguish can you talk a little bit about from a dhamma perspective a buddhist perspective what delusion is because it's not so easy to to differentiate and understand what it is yeah yeah this is uh, this is this is uh, according to the buddhism the uh, uh, important thing is to understand the nature of body and mind how it works what are the important characteristics of this body and mind and how it how this uh, body and mind works delusion is uh, uh, mainly the lord buddha teach dhamma after seeing the reality of body and mind by attaining jhana levels and uh, that is attaining uh, the tevijja tevijja means the, the uh, reflecting on past lives that means the pubbe nivasana suti jnana so seeing the past lives they, they, once you develop mind to the jhana levels and perfect perfecting on that stage so you can leave the body and go outer world and see things and they, you 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 go to a different realm of existence in in that realm of existence you can see the past lives and you can see people die and reborn again uh, they can see clearly the causes and conditions and so they realize the reality of this body and mind how it works how it arises in this world and how it passes away all these things so the persons who have that experience can introduce us or teach us dhamma so they teach what is delusion and what is non delusion so delusion is people think that there is the the root part of the delusion that according to buddhism each and every the uh, worldling in this world when they born in this world they think this body is my i me myself or this my mind the thoughts come to my mind is my mind it comes to my mind my understanding this is my feeling this is my perception this is my volition i want to do this thing i want to do that thing 
and this is my consciousness i conscious i i ear nose tongue body and mind these are the my consciousness so the lord buddha say this is delusion because these are not i me myself these are not according to your wish these always these things arise depending on causes and conditions so causes and conditions are not permanent things these are change change depending on other reasons and always these are subject to change and vanish so therefore you should not think these all these forms feelings perceptions and volitions and consciousnesses related to your body and mind are not belongs to you are not under your control these are natural flow of happening things this is a natural phenomena so one so this this uh, knowledge give to you by the people who attain the the final the the final stages of this path they clearly experience these things and they introduce to the other living beings in this world so so the important part is when you understand this reality the anicca nature this impermanent nature of all these experiences and uh, all uh, body and mind related things and same time you see the this non self nature you see then the suffering is arise because this anicca and anatta this because all these experiences are change but this mental process always attached to things because this uh, this consciousness always based on delusion and it runs based on delusion and when you when you feel something pleasurable your mind naturally attached to these things you mind want to experience again and again when you have a un pleasurable the the feeling you want to just remove it let go it because you don't see the the mind uh, choose these things based on delusion if you understand if you accept this consciousness totally based on causes and conditions and those is those causes and conditions always change when the causes and conditions are changing or the or the, the some other reasons then your feelings and perceptions also change so the present moment forms the feelings and perceptions have actually no very big value so because these things are impermanent things changing things so then you can keep a gap to these things and leave leave them alone so if if you want really you need to use it in this present moment you can use it otherwise you can just let go and free your mind so it is important to have this understanding about the nature of this body and mind the impermanent nature non self nature and suffering nature of all experiences so this understanding we call non delusion the delusion is not having the understanding about this nature of our body and mind so that's why the uh, people uh, attached to objects that means the mental objects and physical objects we we hold on to this because we believe this uh, forms feelings perceptions and volitions arise within ourselves that is called delusion because delusion means not understanding the four, four noble truths basically and uh, not understanding the anicca dukkha anatta this is a uh, impermanent nature non self nature and uh, uh, suffering nature of all experiences so once you listen to this thing and think wisely then you can subside the delusion i i i i must quote ajahn cha on this question a person asked ajahn yeah. cha yeah i can understand greed i mm. can understand hatred but i can understand delusion 
Yeah. He said, Lady, you are riding a horse and yeah. asked where the horse is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was yeah. yeah. So, um, that is the meaning of all consciousness. Everything is delusion. Delusion. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the, well, the whole existence in Sansari is entirely based on delusion. Yeah. The uh, dependent origination starts with delusion. Yeah. Not knowing the five aggregates of arising is delusion. Yeah. Everything is delusion. Delusion. Yeah. Delusion based. Run. That's why the Lord Buddha, the, 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 that kind of teachers introduce us, this one. Then you can uh, see thi these things. This is delusion. This is all based on delusion. This you can let go things and totally extinguish. Once you experience the extinguishment, then you see you can, you can end the suffering. So, this consciousness is always based on delusion. That's why the people, once you, delusion, uh, once you understand th this is delusion, so then you can let go things. If you don't understand, th the, all these forms, feelings, the, 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 the volitions and consciousnesses arise ba based on delusion. You just fall on, you accept the delusion as the truth or reality. You, 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 you don't see it as delusion. You see it as your wisdom or your, uh, uh, your knowledge, wisdom, in this way. So you value it. Once you understand the, all these things based on delusion, you just let go. So first, it is important to have the faith. So then you apply and see. Then you see the extinguishment is happening. So the suffering, you can, you can let go of the suffering. And you see, once you think wisely, this nature of the anicca nature and anatta nature, these things are not under your control. And these, all these things, are, this anicca nature, you can understand all the forms, feelings, perceptions and volitions are not permanent. These things arise depending on causes and conditions. When the causes and conditions change, these things change. That's why I, I, I try to introduce sometimes telling small stories in, in, we are experiencing in our day-to-day -day life. So we see our volitions, our perceptions, our feelings are not fixed things, permanent things. These things are change. When, 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 when we experience something different. So that's why you should not be fooled by these Forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions arise within ourselves. We see something nice, good, and perfect in this moment, and we have a pleasurable feeling. But someone come and introduce, oh, that is ugly, this is ugly, that, that, that is not the pr proper thing. Once you accept it, you see the ugly things there. Previously, you didn't see. Previously, you have a pleasurable feeling. Now you have a the disgusted feeling, though you have to just let go of it. So your mind twist, change, when the causes and conditions change. You don't have a control on it. That's the thing. I mean, we might see some of us are very strong conditioning. And sometimes I see this old thought pattern, old, yeah. old, 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 old thought pattern, and I know. Yeah. It's um, delusion. I know yeah. that yeah. it's something that can be let go of, yeah. but it is very hard. Yeah. So. Uh, it's meditation, it, it's listening, it's probably becoming a monastic, um, all those things. <laughs> so that is... I'm quite serious. I mean, we do see these yeah. things. Like, I had an experience this morning and I thought... I thought I'd let that go. That's as old as I am, right? Uh, and there it was. Yeah, but you know, the let go is happening in one mind moment. Another mind moment, your past karma come can and ripen in the present moment. That is, you have to accept that reality. These things are not under your control. I so, until even the Lord Buddha was alive, Lord Buddha had problems. Lord Buddha asked Venerable Chunda to recite uh, the Bojjanga. Who, who taught people to Bojjanga? Lord Buddha taught. But Lord Buddha asked Chunda, Venerable Chunda to recite Bojjanga, to remind, re recollect me Bojjanga. Yeah. So, my body is suffering, my mind is suffering, so I want to get rid of these things. 
<laughs> so you have to understand the reality of body and mind. That's why Lord Buddha says, until you you survive, you alive, you suffer. This body and mind is such a thing. So all these consciousnesses, that is the nature of it. So you, you have to understand it is the reality. That is the reality. <laughs> so but, but once you see it, be kind to yourself. It is not a fault in yourself. It is the nature. Be mm -hmm. kind. Let go. So that's why Lord Buddha say you have to use the skillful means. Kusala. If you are unhappy when you are seeing that kind of unwholesome things arise within yourself, you are not following Lord Buddha's teachings. That means if you, if you accept, you have to be kind to yourself first. Okay. Why? So, so it, is a, it, is, it is not under your control. It is a natural flow of happening things. You don't have a control on it. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, can I just go back to the um, first sutta that you um, recited about um, faith? First, you have to have faith and yeah. then to listen. Can we, um, can we uh, phrase that word faith as interest? First, you need to have the yeah, interest. interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, it is, yeah. You know, more yeah. than you know, deep faith because deep faith comes later on after yeah. the investigation and all that stuff. Yes. So yeah. It, yeah. Basic interest. Yeah. This is uh, the, actually this is uh, the venerable uh, Ajahn Sujato's translation. Now you can get this one from uh, Sutta Central. So I I took this one from the, because Ajahn uh, Sujato's translations are uh, he has written in uh, simple English, so it is easy to understand and tell. So. <laughs> yeah, that is true, but it is a common term we use because the uh, yeah interest is okay, good. Morning, Bante. Um, can I ask if you can elaborate a bit on the first one, which is, seems easy? It's greed. Mm -hmm. um, at, at a at a certain level, when you see that you are either attaching to uh, what you like, as in you want, yeah. as opposed, and as well as not um, things that you don't like, mm. which is aversion. Mm. Do you see both of them as basically a rising of greed in both ways? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the we are listening to Dhamma, you, you were introduced. This, all these consciousnesses arise based on delusion. So if you don't listen to Dhamma, you don't uh, believe that. The on, only thing you believe is your feelings, perceptions, and volitions. So that's why the greed, all this, the tanha is the, the important the, the thing always arises within yourself when you contact an object. Then the Vedana arises. That is the feelings arise and the the then the tanha is based on the, the feelings. Vedana pacha tanha. That is the, the dependent origination. Lord Buddha introduced us this. So it is a natural phenomena. It is a natural way of happening things. But these feelings actually, all the, if you, if you uh, carefully examine, these feelings are totally based on your past experiences, past volitions. So that is, that's why Lord Buddha says all these things based on karma, your past karma. Karma is not your past life, the, the intentions, but up to this moment, even the previous moment intention affect to the present moment uh, mind. That means the karma is always generating within yourself. So Bhante, the, the definition of greed is... is, is uh all the classification of greed is 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 basically that that uh, that wanting as a and as well as the aversion is that uh, that that sort of sense of the feeling of that wanting and that pushing away that that is the classification of yeah yeah greed. yeah they they come from the same source it is a it is also a part of greed you you pushing also a greed that's why Lord Jesus say bhavatanna vibhavatanna. You know, the, you want to be with this one. You don't want the other one. So the greed, it is a part of the greed. It is not something. But we can clearly see the suffering comes from these two. These two ends. 
So that's why the volitions always arise within yourself because greed and hatred. Even when you want to attain Nibbana, you suffer. Why? <laughs> greed. <laughs> because that is, that is automatically come from your system. It is based on delusion. The mind consciousness always run based on delusion. That's why Lord Buddha said you have to achieve the total extinguishment, the third noble truth. That is the thing you have to achieve. So that means the understanding and practicing in the present moment. When you, when you uh, aware of this reality or the qualities of this reality, then you can release your mind from the thought and let it disappear. That is, the, that is the end of suffering related to that thought. Just let it disappear. Cut off the value of the thought. All, thought means the all feelings, perceptions and volitions are all conditioned stuff and all based on delusion. Just let it be, disappear. Be kind to it. Soft and gentle to it. Because that is the important thing to understand. If you if you hate to that that mental states, another unwholesomeness is there because hate is based normally arise based on uh, wrong understanding. That is uh, the you think you have a control on these things. That's why this is this pleasure and unpleasure things arise. The non pleasure things arise because conditioning. There is no the, the fixed base on these things. These are impermanent things. So these are change. So nothing to worry. Just let it disappear. Um, so that is a phenomena. It is not under your control. Bhante, um, <coughs> so is, unless you're in very deep states of meditation, it seems like an insight is also delusional the thought that you are thinking about something as being delusional is also delusional. Yeah. Um, so yeah. where do you go? I mean, it's an insight that you... Uh, I mean, I've obviously never reached a jhana. I don't know what an insight... Mm -hmm. I have insights mm -hmm. uh, from relative states of calm, mm -hmm. but that's obviously a delusional because there's a thought process involved. Yeah. So I'm thinking about... A delusion and then thinking that's a delusion, which is also something to get rid of. So it's it's a loop that seems seems impossible to sort out. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is the important thing. Lord Buddha always encourage encouraged to to ach achieve the extinguishment. That is achieve the nirodha. That is the one you have to achieve, not the wisdom. Wisdom first actually knowledge come from listening to Dhamma and you, you can gradually you can, you can uh, reflect on Dhamma and see whether it is true or false within yourself. When you see this impermanent nature and uh, uh, suffering nature and the non-self nature, so you can cut off the value of all, all these uh, feelings, perceptions and volitions arise within you, especially the perceptions. We are strongly, most people say this, uh, these uh, insights are just perceptions. Important thing is to achieve the nirodha. That means uh, different, uh, at what lev whatever level of nirodha achievement is the important thing. Even an uh, extinguishment of a thought is important to experience how these things arise and how these things totally pass away. So sometimes people think and understand things and then they think, okay, I understood it. That is uh, insight. Th that is sometimes uh, that is not an insight. That is just a thinking and another perception. You are hold on to another perception. If you have the right wisdom, then that wisdom leads to extinguishment. Bhante, this... Uh Word sometimes difficult to translate to English and answer. The tanna, uh, desire, the greed is a bit of an exaggeration of that, isn't it? Yeah. It's an it's a intense desire. Yeah. Greed. So there's a difference of that. 
And uh, I think that Tanna is part of the cycle, but uh, the hatred or is really just the opposite, which is not, we are doing something to opposite of Tanna, greed. Yeah. And it's mas bas mainly based on ego, isn't it? I mean, we, we hate things depending on you say that I don't want this, I don't like this. Mm. It's mostly based on your ego. The hatred comes from that. Mm. Can we elaborate on that? Do you understand my question? Yeah, actually, the, these words have a, a, a different uh, level of the mentality. Because uh, when uh, the tanha, tanha is a very, very, very subtle level thing. So actually, it is something like your choice or your desire or very subtle level thing. But these things, when grow repeatedly, then the greed arises within yourself or the hatred or ill will. These things start from very subtle level and grow when you are not cutting off and letting go at the, at the early stages. It starts grow and get strengthened. Then, then we use the, the worldly level words. The tanha is very, very subtle. So you don't see tanha until you, you um, go to a higher levels of the meditation. It is, it is a part of the process. So these things introduced by the people who attain the higher levels of the mind. So they, they teach us this, how these things happen. So when you, when you focus your attention to your mental process, how these things are coming and going within ourselves, so then you see the reality of it. Then you tend to experiment, just let go things and free your mind. And cutting, the, the, the reflecting on this anichadu kanata always, then you can cut off the value of all the perceptions and volitions arise within yourself. And you, you try to cut, try to limit things just for the purpose of the present moment. Or otherwise you can cut off and let go most of the thinking. And make your mind still, make your mind calm and quiet. So then naturally you are uh, uh, sati, that means the mindfulness start rising to a different states. So then your mindful getting, mindfulness getting very strong and powerful. Then you see how things are arise and pass away within yourself. How these things, thoughts come, what are the causes and conditions related to that kind of arising of thoughts. So then you clearly understand, then you start, start understanding things, how things come and go. So important thing is cutting off and letting go and free your mind from thoughts. In another, other words, I can say, it is stilling your mind. It is, come to the, it is moving towards the stillness of the mind. That is samatha. Sabhasankara samatha is the, is the first step. Sabhupadi patini sago, then the attachments you can cut off and let go. Take ins to your mind, you can let go. Sabhupadi patini sago. Then you come to tannakayo. Tannakayo means the cut off the tanna, that means the, your choices. You can let go your choices. There is no. Then tannakayo, then virago, then the dispassion. Dispassion means the actually the fading away things happen. Not dispassion actually. Dispassion is a little bit rough. The fading away objects in your mind. Just the, the discolor the mind. The coloring happening. The raga is the, the coloring of the mind. So the, your mind becomes discoloring. The, the, no color. So these are the steps of the path. So the, the first thing is the Sabha Sankara Samatha. This Sankara Samatha happen if you can cut off the value of the object, value of the thought, value of the thinking, then you can free your, free your mind. Because we naturally give a value to our feelings, perceptions and volitions. It is a part of the system. It is, it is totally based on your past karmic uh, forces drives your body and mind. So when you understand this reality within yourself, then your mind tends to, to, uh, to, to strive or put an effort to abandon these forces or keep a distance 
or try to give a little bit of resistance to that uh, phenomena, and then you can you you it keep a gap distance to your feelings and perceptions, and you just you you can you cultivate the value to let go, just cut off and let go, and free your mind. At least when you are practicing meditation, or otherwise, if you if you see the the uh, non-beneficial, these are these are make harm to relationships or to these are unskillful in when we are using in our day-to-day -day life. When we see these things, mind naturally tends to abandon that kind of things. So in the same way, when you understand dhamma. Or the, when you reflect on Dhamma in this way, this Anichadu Kanata nature, your mind naturally get an effort to leave the thoughts a little bit far. So whatever thing arises, you just let it be and let it go. This is a part of the practice. So then you see the, how your mind get uh, calm, quiet and peaceful. So then you start valuing these things. You use your feelings and perceptions when you have to do it. So because if, sometimes when you living in your day-to-day -day life, you have to you have to use your feelings, perceptions, and volitions to do your day-to-day -day work. So then you use it only. Then when you when you develop this ability to cut off and let go, and free your mind, so you can easily choose the wholesome side and uh, cut off and let go the unwholesome side when you are when you are working in your day to day life so because this right attitude non delusion using this non delusion you can easily cut off and let go the unwholesome things arise in your mind because mind is a natural process because the influence of this dhamma if you Use this Dhamma again and again in your mind, re reflect upon again and again, is strengthened in your mind. That influence come to uh, naturally act the, the, against your past karma. It is the Kusala Kama is going. That, because that, that is wholesome intentions. Cultivate in your mind when you are associating with Dhamma, when you see the world through this Anichadu Kanata nature. So then you are not highly attached to the, your feelings, for, for feelings and perceptions and volitions. You just cut off and let go. You have the ability. You cultivate that ability to cut off and let go and free your mind. So then you can easily abandon the unwholesome uh, mentality, unwholesome uh, intentions, unwholesome uh, feelings, unwholesome intentions, especially. They cut off and let go. Ajahn, sometimes when we... Um uh, sometimes we have to put some effort to do day-to-day -day things uh, or something we assume it's wholesome at the beginning and then we try our effort but sometimes it fail right mm. in that situation um, then thinking back why it's happened mm. and then realize we can't control of those things mm. and this is impermanence and mm. we can't we don't have ability to control those things mm. and it's realizing a little bit later mm. but the initial intention was wholesome yeah. assuming as yeah. that but later realized this one we can't control by ourselves yeah. so that stage it may be little bit gap between initially if we understand that we can't control, then that disappointment won't happen. But yeah. it happened a little bit later. So in mm. that situation like thing, so with time, with experience of practicing, will it go away or day-to-day -day life, we come across a lot of things like that? Yeah, that, that is true. Because uh, if we are not aware of this impermanent nature and non-self nature, so the suffering arises. That means you you yes. feel unhappy. Yes. yes. But if you if your mind reminds that okay, these all these things are not under your control, my control. This is nature. Then unhappiness disappears. Why? You you accept the reality. Yes. These things are not under our control. So in the same way, you you see the what is wholesome, what is skillful, and what is unskillful. So then. 
you see this skill, if you are using skillful means, then your mind always be happy with the skillful things. Mm -hmm. But when your mind fall into the unskillful things, you see the suffering nature of it. So, so you accept the reality because until you are living with this uh, consciousnesses, you have to suffer. It is a part of the system. So once you understand this is the nature, then your mind release from the suffering. Yes. Because you, you see it is not your responsibility, it is a part of the nature. But behind that, I, what I did was when I got disappointed and I tried to analyze behind my thought and I thought even I, I was sad, but actually behind is the tanha, grief yeah. for that yeah. thing. So that's caused the suffering, yes. I think. Yes. Yes, because uh, we, we don't, the tanha arise because we don't accept the reality. Yes. This is, the, the tanha arise because the, we think these things are under my control. Yes. So I have to do this one. Yes. So tanha arise based on delusion. Yes. So that is true. Because the, 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 the proximate cause for suffering is tanha. Yes. Because uh, when, when tanha arise with an object, Arise when arising in your mind that create uh, the suffering. Yes. So suffering, this tanha disappear when you see the, rea the if, if you are aware of the reality or the mind remind yourself to the, or this is the reality is these things are not under I me myself. These are not I me myself. So that's why the, the, these these things you have to experience within yourself and then you see this uh, uh, this delusion create suffering. Once you let go the delusion, then the greed and hatred disappear and the suffering disappear. So the, the, it is very, very good to understand when people practicing meditation, sometimes when they fall into sleep, they angry with them. Or then they put on a strong effort and keep wake up and meditate. Try hard. Then they fall into the, the restless mind. This they, they like a pendulum, go here and there. So then when they fall into the, the, the restless mind, then naturally you get tired and fall into sleep again. <laughs> so if you're kind, soft and gentle to your experience, it just arise and pass away. Let it arise and pass away. So then you, are my, you increase your mindfulness. You, are, you, can, you can maintain your mindfulness. That's why Lord Buddha say, skillful and unskillful. You have to understand. This uh, the unskillful things arise in within your mind because delusion. This is the, according to Abhidham, the Abhidham clearly say this uh, uh, the sloth and tofer, uh, this uh, sloth and tofer, uh, restless mind, restless and remorse, and uh, the doubt. All these three based on delusion. We think these, these things are under my control. So that's why I try to control. 